So Dr. Dre made an appearance with Anderson Pack last night in Brixton Academy. Were you there? Of course I was there. How was it? It was, you know, because Dre performed so little, and to see him embrace Anderson Pack like that, because I remember when they started together, Dre's great with new artists. He's done it so many times, and they're usually like Kendrick and Snoop, you know, and even Eazy E, and you know, excuse me, 50 Cent, and he's just very, Kendrick Lamar, he's just great, and he's very proud of them, and he just, to see him on stage last night, to hear the crowd in Brixton do that, was really, a, it was a great moment, because like, we went back to music, you know, and it was, uh, and, you know, like I said, he doesn't perform that often. And you must have been to a lot of concerts in your time, what is the greatest show you've ever been to? Uh, I would have to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big Rolling Stones fan, so when I was a kid, I got to see the Stones a lot, and they, they were great, 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 great shows. Uh, a lot of, I, I've seen a lot of great shows in my life, so I don't, I don't know if there's one that's, um, that, that's one, you know, Springsteen has some great shows. Lady Gaga has some great shows. The early days when we first put our record out, they were, they were extraordinary. U2 um, at the US Festival was just Fantastic, you know, and I uh, let it Cohen and, and Dublin, it was incredible. So, I, look, I, 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 I love the live thing, so I, I have a lot of different reasons why I like a lot of them. So, I thought we could use this time for you to tell the enemy viewers how to get big in the music industry, which you have done. So, you started out by sweeping floors in a studio. Yes. Tell us how that came about and, and what, why did you want to start? Well, first, like you have to learn how to sweep. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, that was what I had to do. I come from an Italian mother, and mm -hmm. you don't sleep in the house, right? So I had to learn how to sleep. Then you have to just be willing to work harder than the next guy. Mm -hmm. Forget how much how insecure you are. Just work harder than the next guy mm -hmm. or girl. Mm -hmm. um, and be willing to listen and hear. Don't think because you did one thing good that you, now your ears shut off. I still have mentors and I still listen to them. I still try what they do, what they say, even though I don't agree. And you have to be of service. When you, when you don't offer anything, really, you have to be of service to these to people. And it's, it's about a certain amount of humility. Even if you're faking it, just don't believe your own bullshit. You know what I mean? And, and just stay in it and stay consistent. People want consistency. They don't want your personality in the room. They don't want this added thing. If you're, I'm talking about recording engineers, mm -hmm. you know, and, and production assistants and things like that. Just keep going and great people will want you around and you will be able to learn. Because I spent the first three years of my career, with, no, the first five years with John Lennon, Bruce Springsteen, and Patti Smith. I had no right to be in that room, except for that I was of service. And as time went on, I, I started learning from each one of them how to help the other. And uh, I was learning, and as I was learning, I was saying, okay, I can offer this. I didn't know that. And um, so that was a great college for me, but I had no right to be in those rooms. I was literally with a shopping cart putting pencils out and razor blades before that. And I just got lucky. But once I got lucky, I didn't let go. So how can people get in those rooms? Do you just have to be lucky or is there a way you to make You get two inroads? jobs and mm -hmm. you work one for free. And you, anybody you say you'll work for free, you work for free. I worked 24 hours a day. I slept two or three hours a night. I had a job and uh, I worked at a studio. I worked at two studios before I got my first job. I was punching holes in records in one place. You know, they put me in the basement. And they used to have these things where they were cutouts. They sell them cheaper. I, you know, I sat there for an entire Saturday just cutting holes in the thing. You know, making them so you can't sell them for a regular price. So you have to be able to put up with that and just wait for your moment and find somebody you connect with and get a shot. But that's how I got my shot. I worked and I had two jobs. I would work like, you know, from eight, from nine to six. And then at night, I go right to the studio and work till two or three in the morning, get up, and be back at work at nine o'clock. And that's what I had to do. And you mentioned mentors a minute ago. Who are your mentors? Well, um, over the years, I've had many. Roy Sakala from the record player was my first mentor. He taught me, if you watch the movie, he taught me how to engineer a record and how to behave in a recording studio. I mean, naturally, um, Lennon was so good to me as a person. It, it, it was. Uh, shocking how generous he was with me and both teaching me and bringing me along and learn what was important you know uh springsteen was great patty was great 
then I started working with people my own age, you know, and so we were able to offer each other something. I mean, Bono's been a, a great inspiration, you know, because he is able to do other things, you know. I was always about, I could only do one thing and what I'm doing right now. But he's able to really take a role in helping the world and doing positive stuff. That was great. Then I, um, then I met David Geffen. It was extraordinary to me, both in teaching me just how to step out of the production world and into the business world and saying, no, you can learn this. Here's the, here's the instincts, you know, do this, do that. And I, I, I really, I, take a, I still do take a lot of advice from him. And then, you know, there's a guy, Doug Morris, who was the head of, who bought my company over, uh, with David over at, the, at Warner first and then at MCA. And I, I talk to him every day and he's, an older, uh, he's older than I am, but he has a lot of interesting things to say. And then I met Steve Jobs, who really taught me how to make hardware. I watched him and I said, okay, and he was generous with me. He would sit with me on a Saturday or something like that and say, no, 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 dude, try this, try that. And I just, he didn't make the Beats headphones, but he gave me the inspiration to make them. He told me that I could, you know, so that's why, but I'm listening. No matter how much success I have, I'm listening and I'm of service to the person I'm listening to. Of all the musicians who appear in the show, and there are many amazing musicians who appear in the show, whose contribution meant the most to you? In the show? Yeah. Well, it's fun with me because I got to be honest with you. They first of all, I'd have to say Tom Petty, because mm -hmm. it was right before he passed, and I miss him tremendously, and uh, I still have trouble watching that episode. You know, so the fact that. He wasn't feeling well. I didn't know, and he got up and did that. I think it meant a lot for everybody in the film, mm -hmm. you know. But I thought Bruce was great, and Stevie Nicks was great, and Will I Am, you know, and uh, Bono was hilarious, you know, uh, calling me a, uh, a virus. You know. <laughs> did you learn anything about yourself through watching people talk about you? It's hard to, I mean, I, I, I um, no, I, I, yes and no, but I, I kind of just block that out. I, I, I just know that my attitude of just working for the people that I work with and, and not being an asshole, mm -hmm. trying as much as you can to not be, because, you know, sometimes you just don't, you, you, you just can't do what people want you to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you automatically become an asshole, sometimes you are an asshole, whatever it is. But I just learned that their dedication and mine, and it worked. You can't, you can't take that lightly. You can't just all of a sudden have a hit and think you're a rock star, you mm -hmm. know? And, and, and that, that was never any of my friends' problems. Bruce Springsteen works today on this Broadway show like he worked on Born to Run. It's mm -hmm. that hard, you know? So I've been attracted to people that are like that. There's a moment in the film where you say you make fear a headwind instead of a tailwind. What's the secret to doing that? How do you do that? How do you shift? Well, my kids ask me that all the time, you know, and the fact is that I was terrified quite a bit, especially when I was younger. When I was working in those studios, I was terrified. And I just, I just trained myself to make that, that feeling feel good, knowing that, okay, if I, because fear will either push you forward Mm -hmm. or stop you in your tracks. So it's a muscle. And what you do is you just keep going and realize that it's only a poltergeist. No different than the movie, The Poltergeist. Mm -hmm. You walk through the light and you'll learn and get more comfortable with it. So what happened was by the time I got to Interscope, I just looked at fear as another tool. Like I felt, you know, I'm, I always, I still fear fear. I still feel fear, but I learned and train myself how to walk through it because it is a ghost. Mm -hmm. It's not a ghost if somebody's standing in front of you with a gun, but you know, I don't recommend you keep walking, mm -hmm. but in life in general and things like that, you know, you can, you can override that thing. Okay. How can people get a job with you? Well, I'm just kind of slowing up myself. You know, um, there are great things at Apple and Beats, mm -hmm. and Beats Electronics and Apple Music. Um, and um, I'm going to consult for Apple, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to work with them. But, but my consulting is, I guess, like someone else's work. You know, I just got, I want to get Apple Music right. I want it to be a platform rather than just a utility like all the streaming services, you know. So I want it to be my own dream. And people at Apple, we want it to be a platform 
that, that's very, very interesting. Right now, streaming services are all the same. So you can get a job in streaming if you just have get onto the idea of making it unique and being able to offer that to the people that are streaming. Right now, there are two kinds of people. There are creative people and they're the engineers. We have a school, Dre and I, in, 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 in USC, that brings those thoughts together, that bring those disciplines together. So if you can learn to keep both, all kids right now are learning about technology and they're learning about liberal arts. Don't go to school, college or high school, or college rather, and give up one of those. Somehow keep it in your life. And that you could offer, offer to people, companies like AT&T that are buying Warner. They speak two different languages. The people are there that speak both languages are really going to be able to help. So what is next for you then? You said you're going to be slowing up, but there are also rumors, which you have refuted, that you're going to be leaving Apple Music at the end of August. What's on the cards for the rest of I'm this year? I'm just going to consult Apple. Uh -huh. That's where my, my thing is, that I'm going to have a great time, and if I'm going to find young entrepreneurs, how you get a job for me is come to me with the greatest idea in the world, mm -hmm. and I'll back it. I'm not going to put the bit in my mouth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be me. You know what I mean? You be me. Mm -hmm. You do that work, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll support you and give you advice.